Welcome to Stuff They Didn't Teach Me in Sunday School. A house divided against itself cannot stand. Most of us would associate that saying with Abraham Lincoln in the Civil War. It actually comes from Jesus in the New Testament when he's talking about whether or not he does his miracles by the power of Satan. And he, his argument is it can't be the power of Satan. How could I cast out Satan by the power of Satan? But that line could also apply to the Old Testament after Solomon's death. When Solomon dies, the succession as king is kind of up for grabs. The natural, the natural is Rehoboam, one of his sons. And Rehoboam begins to step into that role. And the south, the tribe of Judah, accepts him pretty much immediately. But the northern tribes, who probably were put off by, their, by Rehoboam's father, the heavy taxation that they endured, and uh, the selling off of some of the real estate in the northern tribes, the northern tribes had a problem with Rehoboam as a king. And so they sent emissaries to Rehoboam and said, how will you treat us? Well, Rehoboam didn't know how to answer that right away, so he went to his advisors. And he went to his older advisors, and the older advisors said, tell them you'll be a compassionate king, that you will care for them, that you will treat them with gentleness and love. And he went to his younger advisors, and the younger advisors said, tell them you're going to be tough. Tell them you will be tough on them. He went back to the emissaries from the north and they said, how will you treat us? And he said, and he listened to his younger advisors and he said, my father chastised you with whips. I will chastise you with scorpions. Put that down as one of the worst campaign slogans you've ever heard in your life. It worked just about as well as you would think it would. And in chapter 12, the northern tribes say this in, in 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 16. What portion have we in David? We have no inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel, look now to your own house, David. In other words, Rehoboam, go home. You can rule in Judah, but you're not ruling us. That campaign slogan worked just about as well as you would expect it to work. The prophets would look back on this day, the day when the nation divided, as the worst day, one of the worst days in Israel's history. The northern tribes went home. They, they picked a member of Solomon's cabinet who was from the north to be their king, and his name is Jeroboam. Jeroboam, Rehoboam, they rhyme, but they're not related. Jeroboam was part of Solomon's cabinet, Rehoboam, Solomon's son. And now we have two nations, two nations, Jeroboam in the north in Israel and Rehoboam as king of Judah in the south. We have a major problem here, and that is that the northern tribes have no worship site. The worship site, Jerusalem, is very close to the north-south border, but it is just south of that border in, in Judah. And so the northern tribes have no worship site. So either the northern Israelites are going to have to cross the border to go worship in Judah, or they're going to have to come up with a different worship site. And Jeroboam decides that the better decision is to create two worship sites in the north. So he sets up a, a calf, a golden calf, at the city of Dan way up north, and another one in Bethel to the southern part of the northern tribes so that the people will not go down to Jerusalem to worship. Now, I might have had a positive idea there. Some people think that the, the cherubim on top of the Ark of the Covenant were winged bulls, in which case what he might have been doing is try to duplicate that, the winged bulls, the cherubim, at those two locations in the northern tribes. But the problem becomes that, that God had really called on just one place to worship, and now there are three. And the bigger problem is that those shrines at Dan and Bethel very quickly become centers for idolatry, not centers for worshiping Yahweh. And so they're condemned regularly in the prophets as, as pagan worship sites. 
A dark day in Israel's history. The nation divided, pagan worship sites in the north, no access from the northern tribes to Jerusalem to that worship site. It looks bleak indeed. And yet, the good news is that Rehoboam sits on the throne. Not that Rehoboam is that good a king, but Rehoboam is still in the line of David. And that means that covenant that God made with David, that someone in his line would sit on the throne forever, is still alive and well in the person of Rehoboam. God still will accomplish what he wants to accomplish through David's family.